Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Anna and I work for Student Voice Australasia. Before we start the session, I would like to acknowledge the Australia's Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and recognize the traditional custodianship of their ancestral lands, waters, seas, and their rich contribution to society. I am personally uh, joining the session from the Wurundjeri uh, nation of of the Kulin people uh, here in Victoria. And um, if you would like to share um, where you are joining us from in the chat, that would be wonderful. I also would like to acknowledge Ngaivi Omaori of the Tangata Wenoa of Adora, New Zealand and their rich contribution to society. We pay respect to elders, past, present and future leaders. Uh, Student Voice Australasia is a network for students and staff um, from tertiary institutions. Um, and we partnered to foster embedded culture of authentic, meaningful and inclusive student engagement, um, especially around institutional decision-making across governance, learning, teaching and student experience. And this particular session is um, our first session for vocational education and training institutions and practitioners from TAFEs to first address that um, your journey um, from your particular institutions may look very different to um, some of uh, higher education um, institutions in Australia just because of uh, so many factors that we will be discussing today, um, of which the discussion will be led by Michaela Hoskins. And I um, uh, I'm so glad that uh, to see so many people um, in the session today because we, we weren't really sure how this will go uh, because this is our first session and um, historically SVA uh, would have a lot of members from higher education institutions but not so many from TAFEs. Um, so we weren't really able to put as much res as many resources or sessions around this because of just the model of how SBA is operating and funded. Um, but for, I think recognizing that our members, um, even existing members um, from TAFEs uh, really express this interest and uh, also shared that there are communities of practice around TAFEs um, that always also touch on this aspect of work. Um, I think we really recognize that uh, TAFEs really need their separate network. So here we are. Uh, now with I think I'm just also trying to quickly spot a Michaela amongst the attendees. Um, I think Michaela is just joining now. She's been having some network problems, I think. Uh, but um, Michaela Hoskin is a, a long-term member uh, with SVA and has been involved in multiple capacities uh, throughout the years. And one of the ones that has been really helping us to shape um, SVA's direction is uh, Michaela has been part of the steering group, it really informs the strategic direction of SVA and um, has been involved for years now and now has um, transitioned to this wonderful role of hosting this network uh, this year. Michaela, if you feel comfortable um, sort of unmuting and checking how your internet is going, uh, I would love to pass this on to you and kick off of the session. I'm so incredibly sorry my internet at the very last minute has absolutely conked itself so please forgive me it's always the way it's completely stable um, when you don't need it to be in the critical times it, it gives up on you. Um, I'm going to try and deliver this from my mobile um, and I'm just looking up at my screen as we talk so please let me know if things don't work out if you're struggling to hear me um, and and we'll see if we can proceed in this format. Anna, are you okay if I kick off? Yep. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, everyone. I'm sorry I missed a bit of the introduction there, but um, a very big thank you for spending your time with us today. I know that we are all, in, all incredibly time for um, at the moment. Um, and for some of you, I've, I've met you on a number of occasions and I know that we're all on very different journeys when it comes to student voice. So um, we we thought given that we had done some work in 2023 to bring um, a network together in the VET space, we wanted to formalise that um, 
through Student Voice Australasia um, and bring us together to really talk about a range of different things when it comes to student voice and partnership in reference to the vocational education sector. Um, obviously, across the state, we have different models in which we, in how we deliver TAFE, um, you know, our, our colleagues in, in Queensland and in South Australia, New South Wales are, are a statewide operation and, and Victoria, we've got um, many of our TAFEs who work very closely together. Um, uh, so Homes Glen, I think as Anna had mentioned before, Homes Glen has been working with Student Voice Australasia since around 2018, 2019, since its pilot, which was led by Professor Sally Barnum. Um, and uh, the pilot itself was a piece of research that um, I suppose uh, helped to found what are now known as the Step Up Principles. Um, and these were principles that were developed and built our members of, of Student Voice Australia, which at the time were predominantly the university sector. Um, and so as the sole TAFE uh, member at that time, we we also, you know, gave our input to those principles. And I think it was pretty fair to say that those principles stand very strong. And um, I'd say that they are shared probably amongst the, the wider TAFE network now. Um, but what was quite glaringly obvious was the practical application of those principles in the TAFE setting was always going to look different to the university sector. And that was because of the really unique challenges that um, the vocational education training providers face when it comes to building student voice and student partnership. Um, at that time with Student Voice Australasia, it was quite a lonely time. It was, um, I suppose, as, as the TAFE member, we were hearing of all these wonderful um, models of student voice and partnership that were happening in the university sector that were funded, that were, um, I guess, that, that everyone had such belief in and uh, I guess sitting there as the only person from Holmes Glen at that time um, indicated in itself how, how um, I guess, kind of lonely that was. Um, and it, so we were really happy to welcome particularly TAFE South Australia and TAFE Queensland in the later years of joining the network. Um, and I think that's also what led us um, to, to open this up to many more. And I know that over those years, there have been other TAFEs, particularly in Victoria, who have also commenced their journey on student voice and, and partnership. And we've just somehow gathered ourselves as a bit of a network. And so it's really great to really properly formalise that through Student Voice Australasia. Um, I just wanted to very quickly also give a bit of an overview of Holmes Glen's journey. And I won't spend too much time on this because what we wanted to really discuss was the challenges that um, I, I think the vet sector faces when it comes to student voice and partnership and, and open up a discussion around how we can overcome those challenges. I will say at the same time, we, have, um, we as in Anna and myself, had a really good discussion about what we wanted to get out of this session. And whilst we felt that this session was a great opportunity for everyone to come together and align some focus on probably one of the hundred tasks that we have to do in our day jobs, um, I also felt that it was important we walked away with something quite tangible um, and something that could live beyond this um, session, this one hour that we've got together. And, and that's part of the reason why Anna is recording this. But also Anna's got a mirror board that she's going to add some information to and, and once we open up the discussion as well. Um, and at the end of that, I think what we hope is to pull that into a bit of a one pager that might support all of us in the network um, to continue on building student voice and partnership in our tapes. Um, so Back in 2019, I would say Holmes Glen really made a concerted effort to build student voice and partnership at the Institute. And it started off really with kind of identifying that as a key strategic priority um, and the funding of my position. So 
um that in itself kind of gave me or it gave at least one resource the time to really look at how we kind of manage this from a strategic perspective um and so joining student voice australasia was was a was a key component in in kind of trying to bring this to life but as i mentioned you know learning and and thinking about these principles and then applying them was a completely different kind of kettle of fish here so um as we went on our journey through Homes Glen, we we kind of came across, I would say, probably five to six really key critical um, challenges. Uh, and I felt that they were quite unique to TAFE. Um, the first that I found really difficult was the course duration. So we had so many different courses, hundreds of courses with different course durations, which ranged from weeks to days to months and then even to years and we found that incredibly difficult to apply a model that would um, I suppose meet the needs of students studying in those courses for that duration. In addition uh, the next barrier that I really identified was the, the diversity in the mode of delivery in, in TAFE or in, in the VET sector we weren't delivering a three-year face-to-face course, although we were in some cases. We were also delivering traineeships where some students were not coming on site for long periods of time and were doing much of their work predominantly in the workplace. We had apprenticeships. We had apprentices who completed block training. We had um, students dialing in, and of course, we had that face-to-face program. Um, we also had really diverse student profiles. We had um, people upskilling. We had international students, and then kind of the next barrier that I continued to face was commitment from others across the organisation. Student voice and partnership was not their own day job; it was mine. Um, it wasn't considered a key core component of the work that they were employed to do at the Institute. And so I needed to really build partnership with teaching and learning and I needed the backing and the funding from management and they were two key stakeholders that um, I guess at the beginning I needed to convince to come on board this journey with me. Um, I also then discovered the challenge of getting the buy-in from our students. And so often um, our TAFE students don't necessarily immerse themselves into the culture of higher education, um, where a university student will come in and become, um, their, their, their university provider will become part of their identity. That just wasn't true for TAFE students or for VET students. Um, TAFE was a building or a place where they would go and complete their qualification sometimes. They didn't necessarily identify a sense of allegiance or um, or connection to the actual provider. And so therefore being able to then bring them into student um, voice forums and, and to kind of, I suppose, partner with them became increasingly difficult. Um, I suppose I wanted to at this point, and it's probably good because my internet seems to be really mucking around, I wanted to open the discussion to others on the call to see other than those challenges. And maybe, Anna, at this point, you might be able to share the mirror board to put a bit of a visual to what we're talking about here. Um, is Are there any other challenges that the tapes or the the VET providers are facing when it comes to building student voice and partnerships in their organisation. Um, feel free to unmute yourself or or chuck something in the chat there and um, and we'll try and document that down as well. Uh, it's Emma from TAFE Queensland. The one that we have is the tyranny of geography. So we uh, provide service all over Queensland to 36 various campuses, six main, main regions. Um, and I think we've spoken about that before, Michaela, about how do we do that? How do we get consistent practice? How do we get buy-in and all those things around culture that you've spoken about with staff? Um, 
and and they're not trying to make a one size fits all, but trying to get everybody to do something <laughs> across those regions. Thanks. Hi, Michaela. This is Anna from RMIT University. Um, for us, being a dual sector organisation, <clears throat> I think the biggest one for me would be the, the contrast or the perceived contrast in experience from our higher ed students. Um, and that's definitely a, a, a challenge that we'll need to look at very soon. And um, I think you're spot on around the course duration being a big, a big challenge as well. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, really great points. And I think, Emma, you know, you probably have a, um, a really uh, interesting point there that is probably also shared by many of the tapes in Victoria, although yours is, is much greater in scale. Um, I do think that even uniting the campuses that are in driving distance for us is, is difficult too. So I, I understand that completely. Anything else from anyone? This is Jody from Go Tape. Um, we've just had our applications open for our student representative council that we run across all of our campuses and we generally um, jump online, our meetings are, but we've just received 27 applications this year. So we we're pretty excited about that actually from a diverse range of different courses and cohorts and different campuses. So, um, and we'd spoken to Michaela late last year, just picking her brain around what they do at Holmes Glen, um, trying to gather some new ideas on how to go about it because we have been struggling in the last couple of years. Um, so, yeah, hoping that this year, 2024, will be um, a big turnaround, hope, hopefully. But, yeah, we've just run some expression of interest interviews prior to selecting the members for the SRC. So, and we feel that that was a really great process because you got to gauge where they were at. Do you have any other challenges that you've been facing? Um, yeah, I was just going to say, I think it's probably covered in the um, student profile and mode of delivery. Um, but we, we have an awfully hard time getting any trade students to become reps. Um, yeah, so that's our biggest challenge at Southwest TAFE. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we haven't had any luck there at all. Okay, thank you again uh, for contributing to this. We'll um, continue building this up. I will now quickly zoom out a little bit further. I thought if we just move to now some of the work that we've done, and I know that I've had many conversations with those on the call. So, um, you know, if this is a bit repetitive, I hope that it's just it's helpful in reinforcing or building confidence that these challenges can, um, we can overcome them. And particularly, I think, as a network. Um, I think the first really critical thing is really taking stock of existing practices and not not thinking that student voice or student partnership has to sit into a very structured model of um, governance. I think that we've got many practices um, that we probably don't necessarily reflect um, or, or kind of bring together as student voice um, programs or opportunities. And they're things like our complaints and appeals processes, our, our annual or semester-based surveys. Um, I know that a lot of TAFEs have a student ambassador program that typically supports in the delivery of, you know, campus activities or student activities or marketing practices. Um, I know that there are some areas or particularly the vet providers who also deliver or a dual um, providers who also deliver higher education um, seem to also, you know, kind of build in some practices that way around course advisory committees and so forth. So um, I think at Holmes Glen what we probably should have done a little bit earlier was to take stock and reflect on the work that we do do when it comes to student voice and partnership. And to be quite frank, I think that much of it is something that the university sector can also learn from. Um, in addition to that, uh, I think 
one of the other strategies to kind of, I guess, overcome some of those challenges is um, building and refining as we go, um, not letting perfection be that enemy of progress. Um, it's kind of like that grassroots, roll your sleeve up and just get going. And that's definitely been my experience at Homes Glen. Um, I have kind of had some kind of a plan and then just went with it and thought, you know what, we'll keep this going. And I think somebody mentioned before that momentum, um, building that momentum is difficult and sometimes it's just committing. And I know that we all operate in quite a, um, a cyclic kind of um, program, I think. You know, a lot of us operate under a term-based program or a semester-based program. Um, and I think using those as a way to structure our own student voice and partnership programs is quite helpful. I think if you look at the student's journey and kind of building it against that, I think that that helps us um, immensely. Um, I think we spoke about this before and, and Emma might have even mentioned it, is uh, the the moving away from this one-size-fits-all model um, I think that given how time poor we are, we feel often that if we build this model, we can just replicate it across the board. Um, but ultimately, that is never going to work for our students, given we've already identified how diverse they are, how diverse our, our delivery, our models, um, sorry, our modes of delivery are when it comes to, um, you know, vocational training and education, how um, diverse the duration of the course is, I think that it's an impossible task for us to then consider a one-size-fits-all model. Um, and I know that there are other TAFEs who have done some uh, enormous work around this, and, and particularly I wanted to call out TAFE Queensland, who's done a huge amount of work engaging with um, apprentices in the trades areas. Um, so for us at Homes Glen, that did look like things like an informal breakfast with our trade students. Um, it looked like building unique leadership programs for particular course areas where we could try and use that as an opportunity to build skills in our students, but then also capture their voice at the same time. In some cases, it did look like a really formal governance structure um, that, you know, kind of brought leaders together and... and um, I suppose, looked at recommendations and so forth. Um, but like I had mentioned before in other cases, I think that does look like our surveys that we have, um, uh, you know, in existing strategies. And I think it does look like those student ambassadors and, and that kind of stuff as well. Um, in terms of gaining commitment from other members of the Institute, uh, I, I do think that sometimes it's just sticking it out and it's commitment and it's persistence. Um, I know that there have been times where it feels or there is an appearance that oh, it's the next thing that we're doing, it's the next big kind of project that the organisation has announced and where will this go? Will we be looking at the final product of this in, you know, 10 to 15 years? Is this a sustainable piece of work that we're we're listening to or that we're looking at? Um, and I think by honouring that and by committing to something, I have noticed that people have stopped rolling their eyes along the way and they have gotten on the bandwagon because it's not going away. I think also in sticking it out, it demonstrates that it's it's really needed. Um, I don't think there's anyone, you know, I say this all a bit tongue in cheek, but I, I don't think there is anyone uh, in the vet sector who doesn't believe that student voice is critical and key. But I think it's about being able to communicate why it's important to invest in it and to, um, to build it, to not take it for granted, to um, continue to, I guess, empower our students to speak up and contribute and um, make meaningful change to, you know, the the, the provider that they're studying at. Um, and I think in doing that, you can also look at how you can be creative in selling or, I guess, getting others on board. And I do think that often if you can bridge that link from student voice to things like, um, retention, student retention and student experience, 
I do think that that can draw a very clear line around also why this is so significant for the organisation. So, yes, of course, it's a good opportunity for our students, but really it's a great opportunity for us if we can retain more students because our students are themselves experts in their own student experience. Why wouldn't we be working and partnering with them to improve the way in which they educate and train? Um, they have value. Um, you know, it does challenge that notion that the education provider has all the knowledge and that the student is coming to seek that knowledge. It is, um, I guess, acknowledging that we th there is something we can gain from our students there. Um, so um, that sorry, kind just of... to say, Michaela. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, I've started start starting uh, started sessions now, student voice sessions at TAFE Queensland about saying we have five and a half thousand staff and we have 130 students annually. And so we need to balance those scales a bit and you can see people's eyes going, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's really interesting because all, all of our students come with a significant life experience, um, exceptional industry background, all the things that we can harness and bring into our everyday practice so yeah people are like oh, okay yeah so it's good absolutely thank, that. You. thank you I think that's such a great point I think um I mean sheer volume but also our students are you know they come with knowledge they come with experience they've been working sometimes out in industry that we can leverage um it's yeah it's a really great point I guess on that note, was there any other strategies that other TAFEs or um, VET providers have been able to put in place that have helped them overcome any challenges? I think I might steal that one from you, um, Emma, around <laughs> maybe, yeah, demonstrating the numbers. I think that's really powerful. We still have issues. We still have issues where it is... Um decided that this is just going to be business as usual at TAFE Queensland and we still have regions going oh we're just too busy this year can you take us off the expression of interest we're not able to commit to it it's like well it's not really optional you just have to do it so <laughs> um, we're still working through some of those issues yeah and that comes back to the culture isn't it the cultural mindset like this is the expectation of the organization it's our commitment to students and to staff blah 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 all that stuff we know Absolutely. And I have noticed that, um, you know, culture, you know, it comes from bottom up, but it also comes from top down. And when you do hear your leaders explaining that this is a significant um, area, a strategy that we're putting in place to improve the operations or, um, it, you know, it's an area of significance and importance, I think that does set the tone as well. So being able to get that that leadership um, that commitment from leadership, I think, is critical too. Is there anybody it's, else? Sorry, it's quite often unmeasurable. It's not like when we have this many students come through the door, we get this much funding, right? It's something that's quite, um, it's, I don't even know the words, it's very social. So those effects, we might not get those, it, the impacts of that, of the um, participation for a period of time. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. I don't think it's, you don't necessarily see those um, exact tangible outcomes immediately. It is a long game and it is a cultural shift. Um, absolutely. Um, I guess, uh, please feel free to, to also use the chat there if, if you've got other things, um, other strategies that you have been able to, I guess, use over time that has helped you I, I think that's the power of this network is being able to collaborate and share it's um and I guess on that note the question really is around this network in 2024 what is it that we can do that can help us um, evolve our thinking and evolve our practices around student voice and partnership we have done um I guess a significant amount of work to get us all in the space. I think many of us um, are familiar with each other from different communities of practice and so forth, but um, I really know that I benefit from this time of 
regrouping and concentrating my thinking around this topic. Um, I know that that was the sentiment that came out of 2023 with many members of this network. And the question is to continue to build this in a stronger way that produces more outcomes that we can all benefit from. What are the types of discussions or resources that we as a network might like to consider building together or collaborating on to help each other in evolving our student voice and partnership practices. Um, for me, I think a really critical part is having Student Voice Australasia involved. And whilst I know that not all of us are members of the network itself, um, I've really valued Anna's um, work here, the, the background work and pulling this kind of stuff together. Um, you know, I think being able to document our network meetings and, um, you know, help to, I guess, produce some really good tangible outcomes from them. I think we could all benefit from Student Voice Australasia and the project coordination, um, particularly that is led by Anna there. Um, for me at Homescan, I'd also like to really look at how we can use this network to evolve student rep training um, and, and development and is there an opportunity that we can kind of pull together to support the, the training and development of all of our students, connect them into one another and build a wider network than within our TAFEs. Um, and also the projects and the models. I mean, Emma and I for some years have really shared our thinking and, and, and looked at different models and, um, and I'm wondering whether that can be something that we as a network are open to sharing and building together as well. So I'd be keen to hear from others, what are the types of things that you'd like to get out of this? As I mentioned at the top of this session, we're all incredibly time poor, so where we can work smarter, to smarter together, I think that's really critical. And to be able to use these hours to actually produce something quite tangible and, and something that will live longer than this one hour, I think is really critical. So I'd like to try and continue to do that more often. Is is there any other ideas on, on what this network could do for, for our VET network? I'll just say um, I, I like the collaboration. I feel like a lot of us are doing the same thing but differently. So if if we can not reinvent the wheel and share our knowledge and experience, then then that's a great thing. Um, I haven't jumped in previously because it's all covered, which tells me we've all got the same issues. Um, here, here at Wodonga, we've we we've embedded it into our um, belonging framework. Um, we don't yet have. Um, the student reps or student ambassadors or anything, but it is something that we do want to focus on. And um, I agree, we're going through through the same pain as what others have said today. Um, you know, the period of having students here might be, you know, a day, a week, six months, 12 months, two years, um, but it's how, how do you engage with them and get them on board and then, support them um you know i've i've created a draft pd i'm happy to share it looking at paying them as a casual um just so that you know there is something there looking at giving them goodies and that kind of stuff but um for me it's been a lot of discussion here um but no one's ever really taken the reins or given the approval to go do it so yeah just typical vet sector where you kind of building your head against a brick wall for me. But, um, yeah, I think this is really important. Thank you. Uh, we're in the same situation as uh, Wodonga. We haven't, we've only just really started this journey. So having, um, uh, having a network at like a tape network would be very beneficial and um I have been attending the um the ones that um Kayla had set up in the past. Um, so what I'm wondering moving forward is will this um tape student voice networking coming in under student voice 
Australasia and um, that some of us aren't members, like what does the membership look like and what, what's the structure of this moving forward? I think that's a, um, yeah, a, a great point that we'd kind of, I guess, aimed to cover next. So it's a, a nice little way to segue and then may, maybe we can just open up for some general discussion. But um, I, I think at the moment um, this network, as I believe, and Anna might be able to also jump in here, is that um, this is open to non-members currently. I think ultimately there is value in Student Voice Australasia, but the value is really what um, the network can build and develop together for sharing and collaborative purposes. Um, for me, I feel that having more uh, VET members in the network will be richer and hence why I felt trying to bring this all into one area and, and um, bring this together. I think we can learn from our counterparts interstate as well. Um, and ultimately, I think we can really leverage the project management that Student Voice Australasia has to offer. We ourselves, um, I would say it's pretty fair to say that none of us on the call are um, solely responsible, or I'll, I'll rephrase it, that student voice and partnership is our only job at the at, at, at TAFE. I think we are all part of either student comms teams or student services teams or, um, you know, wellbeing teams or so forth. Uh, some, some of us are teaching and learning um, spaces as well, and it's just kind of often something that is plonked on us to continue to drive and whilst we might believe it, it is part of the work that we do. And therefore, I think the value in bringing Student Voice Australasia is, in is having that project management element where someone else can drive the operations of the network, um, pull it together, pull some real tangible outcomes from the network as well, rather than it just be this kind of one hour where we, you know, which I think we all find valuable is you know, bringing our challenges together and, and sharing some ideas, but also at the end of this, being able to produce a document around how to overcome the challenges of student voice and partnership in TAFE. I think that's really critical. We can all use that to then actually apply that in what we're doing. So in terms of the structure at the moment, it is it is currently open to non-members. Um, but I, you know, I do feel that bringing more membership into Student Voice Australasia will benefit us all. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, Katrina. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I know that one of the the I've had a really um lovely piece of feedback around the TAFE toolkit that I had created, which I think I've shared with many of you. Um, which is kind of really all bringing, um, I guess it's kind of talking about Holmes Glen's experience and um, journey in building more of a governance structure when it comes to student voice and partnership. I'd be keen to help to create some other resources around student rep training, um, student rep, you know, the, the kind of the communication strategies. I think that they're all key areas that we're all working on to separately and maybe by coming together and with the collaboration of of Anna and the team to kind of create those for all of us to share I think could be great next steps is what what do people think of that I'm putting stuff in the chat yes please <laughs> exclamation mark Awesome. Yeah, I think that would be great too. Fantastic. Um, I might just open it up then. We've got a little bit of time left. Is there anything else that anyone wanted to add that may not necessarily be specifically around the overcoming those challenges of, of student voice and partnership in TAFE, but is there anything else regarding student voice and partnership that others wanted to open the discussion um, I'm happy to share something that we found quite interesting recently. We had a um, 
our our students at our main campus they're quite diverse and they you know go around introducing through pronouns and that type of thing and we had some other students that may have been a little bit more mature age and they found that quite um, they, they were quite uncomfortable with that and it was a really interesting take on different generations or the different levels of understanding and those sorts of things. Has anybody else had that type of experience and how you may have addressed it? I don't know that I've necessarily had that. Um, well, I've not, I'm, I'm sure that's out there at, at home school and I haven't seen or, or witnessed it, but I do think that there, it goes to show how interesting our student community is in that there are real um, generational divides really and um, I think that in itself has been quite an interesting journey. Um, at Holmes Glen we have kind of worked on developing some resources um, particularly around down in Victoria what's happening with the respect um, an equality and TAFE campaign, um, and I'm hopeful that some of those resources and also what's being led, um, you know, at a at a wider level, might be able to help build a, a bit more education and awareness. Um, so I don't know really what I'm trying to answer here, but I I acknowledge that that would definitely be I think quite prevalent in in many of the the TAFE organisations just because of how diverse our student communities are. Mm, thanks for sharing. They are a microcosm of, of the general yeah, public and community, aren't they? So exactly. Um Anna, I might pass back to you to close then. Sorry, just <clears throat> taking a while to find the mute button as usual. Um, thank you so much for the session. And I, uh, before I wrap up the session, I'll just address a couple of questions that I, I could see in the chat. And I also could um, kind of gather from uh, the discussion. Um, so in terms of the next steps um, that we envision uh, with um Michaela um, being the host of this network for this year, we are planning to do um, two more sessions that will be definitely open to public uh, to start building this uh, network and building um, the value for the sector. And then moving forward, we will be reviewing um, the, the, the model in terms of probably closing it to members. We will have to um, kind of share that with you in future but only from a perspective of resourcing this um, as just to be fully transparent SVA is funded by members only so my salary was, is directly affected by the membership um, which means if uh, we have enough tapes in our membership that means I can just put more resources towards um, actually creating the the resources the kids the program uh, for the network uh, so um, in terms of other things um, that other benefits as members uh, being part of SVA, uh, this will include attendance of our annual events, um, which will be for free and uh, opening other opportunities for your staff and students to be participating in uh, working groups and some other projects that will be rolling out in future. Uh, also, uh, we uh, recently started uh, a Teams online chat for our members, and I think um, Anna has mentioned that in the chat just earlier, that just is an online collaboration platform for us to share ideas, uh, share resources online, and uh, not waiting for sessions like this to really communicate and connect on a national level. So um, that would be something that would be included in SVA membership, we will create a separate uh, group chat. And um, in terms of, uh, again, uh, what 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 are the next steps? Uh, we will be communicating with all of you uh, via email and um, on, in our newsletter about the next session and what we have uh, planned. 
And um, if you would like to pass this on uh, to any of your colleagues, uh, on our website on SVA, we have um, a VET network uh, on, on the website under networks. Uh, so please uh, just share that page with them. And that's when um, your colleagues can also sign up to attend future events and just receive communication emails from myself. Um, we are also very keen to um, facilitate one-on-one -on -one sessions and meetings uh, with uh, the members and have discussions around how we can really tailor uh, the experience and services we provide. Um, so uh, in terms of uh, any information, I, I'm just looking at the chat. Um, the information about SVA membership is available on the homepage. If you have a look at that, um, otherwise uh, I'll send that to you. And um, the mirror board that I was sharing the screen. Um, so once we produce the final uh, resource out of this session, I will share that to everyone who has been invited to this session. Uh, so Sabrina, I think you'll be uh, one of the receivers of that. Um, before I close the session, I just posted a, um, a form for you to fill out. This is just another way for you to provide any feedback about um, what you want to see in future sessions, uh, what topics you would like to see covered and what your thoughts around um, about this particular session as well, just for us to keep improving and growing. Um, and I think that is from it that is it from me um uh, please enjoy the rest of the day and uh, please take your lunch break i know sometimes it's really hard to squeeze one in in the busy days but um otherwise i will just stay back for any questions and quickly mention uh the membership um with sva as well uh, michaela uh, did i cover anything did you want to add anything else before we before i move on to membership information no, a very big thank you to all of you for persisting through my horrendous internet issues. I really do hope that um, you all got something out of this session. I know just by coming together, it is incredibly valuable. Um, and I guess it reaffirms the work that we're doing is significant and important. So thank you for joining. Um, and I'm sure we'll keep this conversation going throughout 2024.